You're in the Business Insurance Zone with me, Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and contributing author to Backroom Technician. This week on The Biz, the mid-year life insurance review for 2013. And on today's show, life insurance policy loans with special guest Bobby Samuelson, executive editor of the Life Product Review. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Well, welcome everyone to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm your host, Steve Savant, and we're broadcasting to a nationwide audience of financial advisors right here in Fountain Hills, Arizona, home of America's Largest Found. And with me, day five, the editor of Life Insurance Review. I mean, I'm thinking this is a huge <laughs> document. I've never heard of this before. Bobby Samuelson. Uh, Bobby, talk a little bit about the review, and then I want to get into policy loans. Yeah, so I mean, basically what I do is I write articles every week on new life insurance contracts that come out. I do a review of them, say what's good, what's bad, how do they mechanically operate. And then I spend some time writing about kind of issues in the, uh, in the industry, major trends. And I've got a lot of data that I put up there mm -hmm. as well to help producers kind of navigate the market. So the whole idea behind it is it's a one-stop shop mm -hmm. for independent life insurance product intelligence. Um, something you can't get from carriers, oh, yeah. and so that's 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 the way. Uh, that's if you're looking for Intel, it's to die for. Just go out to his side again, and we'll have it on the lower third for you. Yep. We're talking about policy loans. Okay. Well, we thought our whole life was kind of controversial. Maybe today could be even worse. Could be. I'm looking at five different platforms, and you may even have one that I haven't thought of. We're looking at zero net cost loans. We're looking at wash loans. We're looking at spread loans. We're looking at direct recognition loans. And of course, with IUL, I have the possibility of participating loans, which everybody, I have to say, the consumers are confused on this because participating loans indexing is usually associated from the consumer point of view with par whole life, which has nothing to do with it. Yeah, right. Just that phrase, those interchangeable well, phrases. Plus there's three different types of index loans inside of IUL, so it gets really oh, complicated. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, let's talk about policy loans. And here's my gripe. You know, we went through the lost decade from 2001 to 2011. Right. We had four bad boy years. Everybody shows the accumulation to celebrate the protectionism. But if you were taking distributions <laughs> during that same 10-year period, Bobby, and I'm, I'm taking policy loans because I believe in participating loans. You're talking about index 2L, I index am loans. so sorry yeah, to say. Yeah, yeah. Because I want to be fair, because everybody says, well, Steve's in love with indexing. Well, here's the underbelly issues. Right. Let's talk about it. Yeah, so I mean, your question is, look, how do negative years impact your, your policy if you're using index loans and index 2L, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a huge issue. And, and, and so if, if, the problem is this. If you, if you set a certain distribution amount, all right, that distribution amount is going to change depending on policy performance regardless, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you inject this index loan volatility issue where you can have big loan charges or big loan positive spreads, and the number that you use to originally estimate those loans assumes a constant arbitrage, which is what they all do in the illustrations, of right? To get the highest number. Uh, then anytime you have years where you get zeros, then you have these big loan charges and, and you have a major problem. And so I have a graph that shows you know, an, a solve and you can see the loan balance growing and growing and growing and you see the cash value growing and everything's perfectly fine because everything grows constantly with an arbitrage. And then I throw one year with a zero in there, what do you think the policy does? It lapses. One, one year of a, of a deviation. And so I think the problem is, that's all manageable risk, theoretically. The problem mm -hmm. is, we don't know who's going to be there to administer this in 10, 15, 20 years to make sure that it's managed. And that's yeah. the biggest That's the biggest issue. Okay, now here it is, uh, and I should get serious kudos for this. Uh, we have a carrier that has now a total concierge service 24-7 yeah. that's going to manage this issue of distribution and go one step further than that. In the years that we have not only non-crediting to the index, but we don't want to pay a 5% loan charge, they know, they'll go to the client and say, we're doing withdrawals to basis this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, see, to me, That's this huge. is the first carrier to come to the table, and it's really good. I'm not going to say the name because they haven't paid me to do There are that. actually two that are kind of doing this sort of thing. Uh -huh. The one you're talking about has done a really, and there's another one. The issue is, okay, that's nice now, but are they still going to be doing that 20 years from now? Well, they say they are. They say they are, but who knows, who right? Knows. These companies could be sold, could be bought. So, sure. so I totally buy into the fact that that should be, frankly, a service that all life insurance companies provide to all policyholders, whether it's indexed, whether it's whole life, whether it's UL. Oh, Bobby, how how I know naive how naive you are. I know because I've been saying this for 20 years and they still don't get it. But I think that's the truth. I think that that should be a part of the deal. Okay, now when we're talking about it, now I gave you an example. The lost decade, we use it as an accumulation tactic because if you can still make positive five and a half, six percent in the four out of ten years, the worst decade of our in our modern existence. Right. 
But when I applied distributions during 2001, two and three, loser years, and 2008, and just did a 10 year snapshot from 65 to age 75, that policy got crushed. Yeah, that's right, I mean, that's the risk. Okay. Somebody's gotta be there to manage that. That's right, and even when I plugged in, just a little side note, even when I plugged in withdrawals to basis in those four years to help mitigate some of the loan costs, I still, still took have it, an issue. it was yeah. hard. Someone so, Unless you're, if you're doing indexing for life insurance as an income play, it better be minimize death benefit to the debt for corridor. I mean, I don't understand any other way to play with this yeah. to give the policy a potential possibility of actually coming true. Yeah, well look, I think, I think, frankly, I think no one should illustrate index products with index loans. I'm gonna make that as a sweeping statement. Mm -hmm. You should always illustrate at fixed loans and then say, in the future, you will have the option to switch to index loans. Mm -hmm. and we have no idea what the effect of that will be because there will be negative years, there will be positive mm -hmm. years. So here's what I always say, and I think it's true. If you can't sell, if you can sell a policy with index loans, but you can't sell that exact same policy with the exact same assumptions using fixed loans, you shouldn't be selling it with index loans. Because the reality is, some, the rea you know, reality is going to be somewhere in between, outside of that bound or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the problem is people go in there and sell all this income and often come to feed world hunger using in, in these index loans and disclose none of the risk. Mm -hmm. Well, you should show a much lower number, right? And say, you may have a riskier option here that may give you some return, but there's a lot of risk in that. And, and you need to make that decision 10, 15, 20 years from now, not today, not at sale. Okay, well you just brought up a whole nother problem here, oh, sorry. Bobby. I have fixed rates, I have variable rates. I have current company practice, yeah, I have contractual yeah, 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 guarantee. Yeah, yeah. I mean. It never stops. I mean, uh, the moving parts, the mechanics, you have to be a mortality mechanic to play here. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. not everybody is gifted as you. I just wonder where the poor agent, we just were struggling just to wrap our heads around the mechanics of this. And that's why I recommend heavily, know the product. If you're gonna settle with two or three, you gotta know the mechanics. You gotta do some of the numbers here. And yes, you're gonna have to be a little bit of an actuary to play this <laughs> game. Listen, we're gonna talk more about life insurance policy loans with executive editor of Life Product Review, Bobby Samuelson. And don't forget to visit IULUniversity.com for the best training and education on life insurance for retirement income. You're listening to the insurance industry's number one resource for products, planning ideas, carrier information, and interviews you can use. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Did you know the average 401k runs out of money just seven to eight years into retirement? Time Magazine, The Wall Street Journal, and many other publications have warned of the difficulty of saving with a 401k. But what if there was a way to create tax-free lifetime retirement income with no stock market risk? Good news, there is. You know, living in fear of the next market dive is not the way I want to live my life. Why would I go out there and take on risk when I don't need to? I have a lot less stress knowing I can't lose any more of my retirement savings in the stock market. Call now to receive your free, no obligation analysis of what this retirement vehicle could do for you. A comparison to your current retirement plan and a free video that explains this exciting opportunity. Start planning a retirement you can enjoy instead of worrying about future tax increases and stock market losses. Creating income that will last your entire life is the most important thing you'll ever do. Take control of your future. Call now for your free analysis, comparison, and video. Well, welcome back to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm Steve Savant with Bobby Samuelson. And you remember, you can order today's materials at thebiz.tv. And while you're out there, click on the backroom technician icon right on the Biz blog for their 30-day free trial offer for the best needs analysis and education material that addresses almost every financial planning scenario. I've been using it for 22 years and I'm a contributor. And just a heads up, before moving forward with anything you hear on the show on tax and taxes and DAC taxes and everything else we talk about. Always check in with your legal counsel and your tax advisor as if they know of that issue. Yeah. And remember also if you're a broker dealer, FINRA license, you always have to check in with your compliance officer if you use any of the material on my show. We're talking about insurance policy loans. Bobby just did a sweeping broad based holy mackerel reference point. You better be showing fixed index. I mean, I mean if you're loans. doing index UL, you should be using it. 
Yeah, I think as a basis of comparison for the sale, that's the best way to, to okay. set the expectations. All right, now, Bobby, I want to go to the next controversy. We talked about Par Whole Life last yesterday, and, and, and of course, we're getting email that, that the haters and the lovers. Yeah. But here's this issue on Par Whole Life. There's only two or three companies left doing this, but they just happen to be big names. I don't want to say their names now. I don't want to test my E&O. However, they <laughs> use direct recognition loans. Talk about that because I think it's controversial. I don't see how it can be consumer-centric. Yeah, I, first of all, I'm not an expert in, in loans on whole life contracts, but here's kind of my kind of Occam's razor sort of view of this. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I've talked to companies that do have direct recognition. I've talked to ones that don't do direct, direct recognition. They obviously have their own philosophies on this. Um, I think at the end of the day, the, the net result to the client, honestly, will look better in the illustration for the non-direct recognition. Mm -hmm. But in reality, over the life of these contracts, I, I think the results will be fairly similar, uh, making one assumption. And the assumption is that these are mutual companies who, mm -hmm. even, if, even if there may be a little bit of a penalty technically for using a direct recognition loan, they'll pass that back to the policyholder in the form of higher dividends in the long run. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I'm not a believer either way. I sort of say again, with whole life, in my opinion, you're buying the company, not really the product. Mm -hmm. And because at the end of the day, the company holds all the strings. Right. Oh yeah. And so and so you're buying the company, not the product. So find a company you like, find an advisor you like, and uh, you know, and buy a good product written by a good company. Whether it's direct recognition or not direct recognition, I think at the end, I think it's very hard to know 10, 15, 20, 30 years from now because there are risks in both. Oh yeah. Absolutely. I mean, and, and there are levers in both. And so I think again, illustrated wise, I can see why uh, not direct recognition looks better. But I think over the long run, they're probably going to be very, very similar. Bobby, when I think about the reverse, let's go from direct recognition loans, which I have said sometimes can be somewhat consumer punitive. Yeah, sure. Let's uh, go to the other side. You have to trust the insurance company with them, I mean, oh, for sure. The trust the insurance company, that phrase right there. Hey, look, there some just... companies are trustworthy and some companies are. That's one thing I've learned. Okay, well, uh, next week, Bobby, on his site, will have the ones you can't trust and the ones you can't trust. <laughs> Your career No over. one can predict that, yeah. Uh, well, what about zero net cost loans now? There are a few carriers that use it, some of them, five years, 10 years, you have to be in yeah, it. Then. Yeah. But let's talk about it because Sometimes I hear a little wrangling at the IRS that says zero net cost loans, the charging and crediting of the same rate in a very short period of time, 30 yeah. days out, it seems to be not a loan. Yeah, I mean, look, <laughs> this is uh, this is a technicality, mm -hmm. right? I mean, they are tech. This is a this is a technical escape of why loans get treated as an, as not taxed, right? Because mm -hmm. we're pulling money out of these policies, essentially withdrawing it on from an. Right. And there is some income tax liability that's built up if the policy does lapse, but these policies are now have overloan protection riders mm -hmm. and all sorts of stuff. So, so realistically, there's no reason why they should lapse. You'd rather right. pay to keep the policy in force than to pay the extra tax, right? So, right? so I can understand why the IRS says that. And frankly, look, I mean, I said on a previous show, I think, I think our status from a tax standpoint is constantly imperiled. And the more that we rely on things like that or tell those sorts of stories mm -hmm. or sort of position products that way, the more we endanger it ourselves. I mean, this is a tragedy of the commons mm -hmm. problem, right? I mean, if there's a field in the middle of the village and everyone leads their cow to go eat, eat of the field mm -hmm. because it's free, mm -hmm. then there's no more grass left. And the problem is now all the companies are coming to the field, the retirement mm -hmm. and distribution field, and they're, and they're out there and they're all grazing. And the problem is we may end up with nothing left after it's all done mm -hmm. because we've just abused the, the system. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, a client of mine told me that he was driving around um, the loop in his city, and he heard a radio ad on about tax free retirement. If you want to screw the IRS, you buy this product, blah, 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 blah. You know what city he lived in? Washington, D.C. Now imagine if a senator was to get up in his car in the morning and flip on the radio. What would that senator think? Well, that senator would think this is the biggest. Well, it depends he's a Republican or Democrat. Yeah, no, that's no, true. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, both on the same page when it comes to this sometimes. So I think, so I think that's the issue mm -hmm. is we've got to be very careful. And I do think things like this can tread close to the line. I want to talk to you about something that kind of crossed my path about a year ago. And I've talked about this before this happened, but this accentuated it. I asked for an enforce ledger. And I noticed that there was, they were using spread loans. So they were charging and crediting about a point and a half spread. Yeah. All right, no problem. It started at the beginning of the calendar year. The crediting was at the end of the year. I get mm, that. Yeah. But then we went to loans and I noticed for the first time in an enforced ledger that they actually showed the accrual calendar change because you know you got a spread in time, the time differential. So it's not pure one and a half. Yeah. It turned out to be like 175. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, see, to me, I was like, well, where was that in the disclosure? Because it's not in the illustration. It doesn't show up in any of the policy information. Yeah. And But the accrual, just the difference in time over 30 years, you're going to have a small accrual charge. Yeah, yeah. And actually, there's a lot of places where stuff like that shows up. Right. I mean, I mean, there's, um, you know, especially on indexed UL, uh, oh. where, where 
you get a 12% credit. Well, is that credited to the average account value through the year, the end? You know, how mm -hmm. does that compound? Does it not compound? All sorts of stuff like that. So I, I would say this, you know, loans are tricky. UL is tricky. And the key thing is to have an advisor or to be an advisor that understands how this stuff actually works and to make sure that clients are prepared for it. Because every policy, I don't know the policy you're talking about specifically, mm -hmm. but every policy i found has some sort of quirk in it. And so these guys got to read the contracts. Well, because I saw this, I ordered four other enforced ledgers on other companies and they had the same spread rate over the same period. Different performance though. And yeah. different performance yeah. and no accrual charge. Yeah. Full disclosure, oh, that's all I'm asking. <laughs> you remember, you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, or email me at steve at thebiz.tv. That's the buzz on the biz for today. You've been in the zone, the business insurance zone. You're listening to the insurance industry's number one resource for products, planning ideas, carrier information, and interviews you can use. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use.